Q1 2021 really marked the beginning of a MindMed 2.0 in both team building and overall strategy. What's up, Psychedelic Investors? My name is James, and you're watching The Psychedelic Investor, your number one news source for psychedelic stocks and everything MindMed. Today, I welcome you to part two of our discussion on MindMed's conference call. So yesterday we talked about the progress MindMed has made up until this point. We talked about the mission of MindMed, the talent that they have acquired over the past quarter, and of course, the progress they've been making on their clinical trials. Today, however, we are looking towards the future, as discussed in the conference call. So where is MindMed going? What is MindMed 2.0? And what will MindMed look like in three years' time as compared to now? Over the next several years, I expect four transformations to occur as discussed in the conference call. First, MindMed's transition to a tech company from just a pharmaceuticals company. Second, the shift from classic psychedelics like LSD to quote-unquote next-generation patent-protected substances. Third, a reorientation away from the one-size-fits-all medical solutions of today towards personalized medicine. And fourth, towards finding partnerships with major pharmaceutical companies. And if you didn't see yesterday's episode, don't worry, we're chill, you don't need to see that to understand everything that we're going to be talking about in today's episode. I will, however, at the end of this episode, link you to that and also the conference call itself because... It is important for investors and potential investors in a company to watch the conference calls. We get so much unique information that investors just won't get anywhere else. And that was the case in this one. So I highly suggest you watch it, even though I think we give a pretty good explanation and breakdown of what happened in it. And don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this episode, invest in the channel with your like and subscribe. Over time, you'll see your investment grow as we continue to bring you the information that you need to know before investing in the psychedelic medicines landscape. Enjoy the episode. Anybody paying attention to MindMed or anybody that's listened to a J.R. Ron interview sometime over the previous few months will most likely have heard a quote similar to this. I think if you look back a, a year from now, you will look back at MindMed as, as much a, a tech company as it is a drug development company. In terms of the messaging that MindMed has given in terms of their future strategy, this idea has been central. But what does it even mean? Ever since the creation of their digital medicines division, Albert, and particularly since their acquisition of Health Mode, this has been a major tar- talking point of the company. But up until now, it's been somewhat difficult to get past all the, you know, like the buzzwords, like we're doing machine learning and artificial intelligence, yada, 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 yada. But in this conference call, we actually got a little bit of meat on the bones when it comes to this statement that MindMed is becoming a tech company. First, they are working on a patient-facing measurement app. So this can record data in two different ways. First, through biometric data, perhaps gathered through a smartwatch, so like your pulse and other data that can be gathered through sensors. And then second, through patient reporting on daily questionnaires in an app, so like how are you feeling today, what is your mood levels, etc., etc. The combination of these two different types of data will allow for greater personalization of data for each individual. And this will lead to better medicine outcomes for that person. So while apps like this aren't exactly new, if MindMed can automate much of the process and if AI can accurately be used to make decisions and even prescribe unique dose levels, then they could be on the forefront of a technology-enabled personalized medicine revolution, which we'll get to later in this episode. So this is also going to be important for the scaling of treatment. So any steps that can be automated will mean that therapists have more time to actually spend helping with their patients. And as we talked about a lot in the last episode, helping gain access or get patients access to these treatments is one of the core missions of MindMed. So we actually got our first look of what this app is going to look like in the conference call, or at least I think it's our first look. Maybe they've released it before and I just haven't seen it, but either way, While it doesn't tell us much what we see here, it does look cool. You get to see the little bit of uh, scale that you have there for how the person is feeling on the day. So again, we don't get too much information on how exactly it's going to work, but it does look good, something that I think people would like to use if they were in this regiment. 
The second way that tech is going to be used in the near future for MindMed is to help accelerate and ameliorate the clinical trial process. This will also be done through the app and the platform will perform or will allow for ever more data to be collected during the clinical trial process. And this data will then be crunched by what the company calls their quote, core machine learning IP, unquote, to come to better conclusions. Again, I will caution here, as I have done in previous episodes, that until we see a demonstration of their tech, I wouldn't get too excited about it. Everybody and their grandmother these days has their new machine learning company and their new groundbreaking technology that they just can't wait to talk to you about. So while everything that they're saying in this conference call, it does sound fantastic and MindMed is making a big push to make technology a core part of their business, the proof will be in the pudding. I will believe it when I see it. Thirdly, AI can be used to help create and identify new psychedelic compounds based off of classic psychedelics. While I 100% think that this is going to be a reality in the somewhat near future when it comes to medicine writ large, there's no guarantee that MindMed's data scientists will be the ones to crack this egg. This is probably going to still take like another decade to work out. But even if they did already perfect the AI technology right now, which I'm assuming they haven't done yet, I, I mean, I hope they have, but I assume they haven't done yet, then the computer would still have to start finding a compound right now, which would then need to go through the long clinical trial process. So even giving MindMed the benefit of the doubt here, we are probably far away from seeing this be a reality. Therefore, in terms of the next few years, the most important part of MindMed's tech division, at least in my opinion as an outsider who's looking in, I have no inside information, of course, uh, I think the most important part is going to be the first one that I mentioned, which is being able to gather real-time data of patients, both biometric and through questionnaires, because this will give therapists more and more information to work with, and with a little bit of AI automation sprinkled in there, Hopefully it will allow better prescriptions, maybe better dose levels given to the individual. The second core theme for the near future of MindMed is the creation of novel compounds based on the quote, classic psychedelics. Currently, most of MindMed's advanced programs use LSD, which is in the public domain. While this is, you know, fine and good for now, we're getting lots of great scientific data on LSD, the effectiveness of the compound, how it can be used, how it can be used in different settings, there are two core pro problems with continuing down this route. The first is the most practical. There are potentially serious problems with the use of LSD therapy. For example, the duration of the effect. An LSD trip can last all day, which makes therapy somewhat impractical. If you want to if you want to have a therapy session, you got to stay at the therapist's office all day long. This can also make it unaffordable to some people. And as we've talked about a lot, uh, creating more access to these therapies is one of MindMed's main goals. So using a psychedelic compound that might last all day might just be a little bit impractical. Another possible issue with using LSD in therapy is the existence of bad trips. Look guys, all it's going to take is for one guy to completely lose his shit and think his therapist was sent from the devil to end the world or some crazy stuff to completely screw up this entire project. So hopefully we are creating LSD that kind of gets rid of the bad trip through engineering it out. The second issue is a business one. Since LSD is more or less just in the public domain, and if MindMed spends half a decade or more proving its validity and the medical value of LSD through these scientific studies and hundreds of millions of dollars spent, then everybody else will just be able to piggyback off of their hard work, hundreds of millions of dollars, once these therapies are proven. Yes, MindMed may have, may have a few year period where they'll have exclusive rights to use LSD treatments, maybe. But thinking long term, the company will want to be using a substance that they themselves created to give themselves that IP protection. Therefore, it makes sense to try to kill two birds with one stone and create a substance that they own the IP to, but that also solves the problems that LSD may carry with it in a therapy setting. In this conference call, the leaders of MindMed were the clearest that I've ever seen them before about this goal, uh, though they have hinted at this in a couple press releases somewhat recently. For example, 
when talking about MindMed's mission to develop and deploy innovative technologies and therapeutics to address large problems in our society, Jeraron said this, We plan to further this mission initially through classic psychedelics such as LSD and MDMA, and eventually through novel chemical entities based on psychedelics. And when Rob Barrow, who is Chief Development Officer, um, was discussing the core principles of their development, two of the four core principles was angled towards the creation of new substances. The second core principle was a focus on R&D to accelerate timelines and protect market share upon commercialization, which they would do by, quote, progressing lead drug candidates, both novel and traditional, to drive near and long-term value creation. The fourth core principle was a focus on IP. Here, he said they would aggressively patent true innovations without giving in to the temptation to make frivolous patent claims for the sake of publicity or usurping public IP from public domain. And by the way, I think that perhaps, maybe, they might have just been taking a little bit of a swipe here at Compass Pathways and at High Life Sciences, uh, who have been accused of, allegedly, attempting to essentially patent troll and attempting to patent psychedelic substances that are in the public domain. I'm going to have no comment on that for now, but it appears that maybe they took a little bit of swipe at the competition here, so I love to see that. The company, MindMed, I mean, also talked about how their partnership with MindShift Compounds was key for the creation of new drugs. They said that the company already has a library of compounds, which MindMed is currently patenting. And they aim to start the first clinical trial of these new compounds as early as quarter one next year. So when thinking about MindMed's program long-term or programs long-term, including things like Project Lucy and the other ones that use LSD, I would expect them to shift away from using traditional pure LSD through or to a compound that, you know, they can actually patent themselves, which perhaps has a shorter lifespan and perhaps engineers out some of the possibility for a bad trip. The third trend I expect to see MindMed follow over the coming years, as talked about in the conference call, is a shift towards personalized medicine. At the current moment, most medicine in our society is a one-size-fits-all solution. Generally, medicines are not tailored to the individual based on variables like genetics, mood, phenome, etc. Therefore, the shift towards personalizing both the dose levels and also which drugs are actually being used in which individuals is a trend that we are seeing happening right now in the medical field across the board. This is going to be the future of medicine and not just for psychedelic companies. So it's good that we're seeing MindMed making these moves here and they actually talked about on the call a recently completed phase one study that they did looking at personalizing MDMA dosing levels. And they say this is the first scientific data on personalized MDMA treatment. This also, of course, overlaps with Albert as they are using machine learning to uh, personalize these dose levels. So in the future, I would expect an even greater focus on personalizing their treatments to the individual as opposed to a one-size-fits-all solution. As you can see, the first three trends of the future are highly interrelated. They all focus on the development of artificial intelligence. We, as a society, are entering the fourth industrial revolution, where artificial intelligence and algorithms are gonna change everything. And we're still in early stages. We're probably in the second inning of the fourth industrial revolution, but it is hard to understate the changes that we are going to see over the coming decade or two. And any company not staying on top of these technological trends will be left behind. The fourth trend that we should be keeping an eye out for in the near future is MindMed partnering with one of the several major pharmaceutical companies. So this has actually been commented on before, but in this uh, conference call, JR was much more explicit in his response to a question than I've ever seen him before. So let's just go ahead and take a listen to JR Ron talking about the potential to partner with uh, new companies. What, what I will also say um, is is that as we spin up these new programs, um, we're going to eventually want to look for, for for partnerships for them, and so that will be you know paramount uh, to our strategy. Um, but I, I think our objective as a company is always to bring these through phase two proof of concepts or later stage phase twos, and then as we head into phase threes, determine are there great partners that that um, you know need you know would like to collaborate with us. 
there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies out there that have some massive liabilities in the pain and addiction space because of the opioid crisis. Um, I think eventually the, you know, these type of companies are going to need to prove to society that they're doing something to help solve these problems. And I, and I, and I, I think we are going to be a very well placed as a company in the future uh, around this. So in this clip, he talks about how they plan to do this as they move to phase three trials, which they'll be doing in the next year or two for several different programs. Therefore, in that time frame, expect to see these partnerships start to be announced. Now, I do find it very interesting how he framed potential partners uh, as companies who have potentially caused the opioid crisis uh, due to their pain medication prescriptions. So maybe that's a signal to which companies they're aiming to partner with. And look, personally, I have zero idea which companies these will be. However, wink, wink, there has been a little bit of speculation around Johnson and & Johnson. And while this is solidly in the speculation camp or the rumor camp, there are some interesting, let's call them coincidences to back this up. So I'm not gonna get into that here, but if you would like me to do a full episode, probably based in the speculation zone, about all the links between MindMed and Johnson & Johnson and why possibly that may be a company that they're planning on partnering with, let me know down in the comments. If enough of you want to see that episode, I will 100% make that. That is all for today, folks. I hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you think I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments. And yeah, we will talk again soon. Like I said, I will put up on the screen the links to both the part one of this conversation and also the conference call itself. So I definitely suggest you check both of those out. They're both must watch, must watch episodes for any investors in the psychedelic medicine space and MindMet in particular. Bye bye guys, I love you. I'll talk to you again soon. This is James from Psychedelic Investor, signing out.